Hello everyone, it is Tuesday the 20th and um, there is going to be yet another council meeting tonight in Bay St. Louis. Hopefully this time they'll go ahead and pull the trigger, which they should have already done, but hopefully they'll feel more comfortable about doing it tonight to bring on a grant admin because as you recall from my previous post, they had sent out RFPs and now there was some confusion between the city admin and the council as to which one or how they were going to pick one. Um, but with that being said, there was a, a very special person reached out to me uh, about a week ago, and I'm not going to give her name right now, um, but she's an amazing woman. She lives in the Ocean Springs area, and she is one of our retired Air Force veterans. So when she started this process, she was active military. Now she's a veteran. And as you can hear from her statement that I'm going to read, and she sent me two versions. I'm just going to go ahead and read both versions because I think they're both pertinent. If I see that there's some um, crossover information, I'll look and I'll skip through that. So if you see me pause, that's what I'm doing. But um, I think it's very important to share her story. It's similar to mine, only she was not able to get an award letter um, even though she's been through every hoop that I've been through. And so it's not just me, it's her as well as, uh, I believe, 14 other people in her Ocean Springs area that were trying to get, at first, the FMA grant, and then they were identified for the SWIFT grant, like I was, um, but they haven't been able to access that one either. So there is a breakdown in Mississippi. I don't know where it is. I'm asking for our, um, our elected officials to have a meeting of the minds. You know, it might be a time where the city and the county and the state and the federal level need to come together to see why uh, Mississippi can't access these funds when so many are being accessed in Louisiana. So with that being said, I'm gonna read my opening statement tonight. This is what I'm gonna read at the council meeting tonight. Read my opening statement and then go on to this woman's, um, this, vet, this Air Force veterans statement as well. So here we go. Okay, my opening statement for tonight. For decades, the entire Gulf Coast of America has weathered many disasters, but our country rose up and got it right. This instance regarding these grants has been the opposite. The state of Mississippi can't seem to get it right. Therefore, the confusion finger pointing and chaos from all four corners, creating hardship, angers and despair from citizens, residents, and now even our honorable servicemen and women. This disaster has become a disaster. I urge this council, meaning the Bay St. Louis Council, to now not only help our home as well as April Birds, but the many people saying, quote, somebody make this right, end quote. I implore one or all of you to motion, second, and vote the majority to nominate a professional firm, a grant admin firm, even at a minimum amount of restitution to teach you, us, FEMA, and MEMA to streamline and make this right for many to take advantage of as soon as possible. You bring in need of engineers and advisors, grant writers, etc. when the city needs dictate it. This is one of those times. Your citizens' needs dictate it. So with that going on, like I said, I'm not gonna divulge her name right now, but she uh, is Air Force. So um, in our area, so this is her statement. After conducting extensive research, I have found that the state of Mississippi has not applied for funding through the Flood Mitigation Assistance, FMA, program since 2009. Despite being one of the states with the highest risk of flooding, this lack of action on the part of the state is unacceptable, especially considering that numerous grants have been approved and distributed to other states, indicating that funding was available but not being sought. This situation is particularly troubling in light of the fact that new construction in Mississippi 
is taking place in areas with moderate to severe flood risk, even though it is projected that flooding will worsen over the next 30 years. I have personally attempted to secure assistance through the FMA program for several years with no success until 2022 when I received a letter from FEMA stating that I was eligible for the FMA SWIFT current grant due to my property status as a severe repetitive loss. However, despite my efforts to work with the Jackson County Planning Floodplain Manager to apply for the grant, the process has been plagued by delays and miscommunications. I have been repeatedly assured that the grant process will be expedited, only to experience significant delays and a lack of transparency regarding the status of my application. One of the most concerning aspects of this situation is the lack of clear communication between the various agencies, and this is where I have found great um, distress for our situation as well. The various agencies involved in the grant process. For example, I was told by the Jackson County Planning Office that all required paperwork had been submitted to MEMA only to learn from MEMA that, that had not, they had not received any of the necessary documentation. This lack of coordination has caused significant delays and added to the emotional and physical toll of this grant process. In addition to these communication issues, I have also encountered inconsistencies and contradictions regarding the valuation of my property. I was originally told in May of 22 that the value would be determined using methods such as the assessed value with a multiplier or average from three commercial websites. I was provided an offer valuation in April of 23. However, I was informed in September of 23 that appraisals would be conducted, which is, which is contradictory to the information I was provided before. The fact that FEMA has already provided funding to MEMA based on my original offer valuation and this lack of clarity regarding the valuation process has only added to my concerns about the fairness and transparency of Mississippi handling of this grant. The lengthy and convoluted grant process has taken a significant toll. This is what breaks my heart because I can certainly relate to this next part coming up. Listen to this. The lengthy and convoluted grant process has taken a significant toll on my mental and emotional well-being. Now, folks, we're talking about a fierce woman that is now a veteran of the Air Force, and this has taken a toll on her as well as that of other homeowners who are awaiting assistance. I have had to make the ultimate sacrifice in December of 23 and move my family to include my unborn grandchildren out of the state due to the health concerns of living in a SRL and the uncertainty of the grant timeline. Additionally, I am aware of, of a, I'm sorry. Additionally, I am aware of a participant who has passed away during the timeline this is taken. Despite these challenges, I continue to advocate for the finalization of the FMA SWIFT current grant and for the provision of assistance to homeowners in Mississippi who are at risk of flooding. I urge the relevant authorities to take immediate action to finalize the grant process, streamline the process for future participants, and provide the assistance that is so desperately needed by homeowners in Mississippi. Now I'm gonna just glance through real quick because she sent <clears throat> a revised version and I just wanna see if there was any other extra information in here. I need to, um, I don't see that. Hold on one second, because I don't wanna stop it. Um, I did wanna, say this part. Okay, I'm going to read this paragraph. From 2018 to 2022, I did not get any traction for assistance for a grant. Then I received a letter directly from FEMA saying since I had severe repetitive loss, I was eligible for the SWIFT current grant. Um, I contacted the Jackson County Planning Floodplain Manager and let her know I wanted to participate in the grant. I was working as a contractor overseas for the Air Force at this time and was told the process was going to be fast. 
So I produced a pre-approval. <clears throat> months and months rolled into years with uncertainty and no clarity on what was going on in the grant process. The negligence, I can, I can identify with that term right there. The negligence of both Jackson County and MEMA, and once again, MEMA is headed up by Stephen McCraney and also Executive Deputy Clayton French, in processing the FMA SWIFT current grant is deeply concerning. The lack of effort dedicated to this program or inexperience of the state with processing grants has left me in a perpetual state of demolition, cleanup, and construction, which has had significant toll on my mental and emotional well-being. The grant process has been emotionally and physically taxing and disheartening, and I had to constantly inject myself to try to get information and ensure the grant was being pushed forward. Man, can I relate to that? For example, <clears throat> I was told by, <clears throat> excuse me, Jackson County Planning Office that all the paperwork FEMA required had been submitted to MEMA. However, when I spoke to MEMA, they said they did not have any of the required paperwork. And this is just one example between the agencies. And in my attempts to get information, I was told, quote, I've heard this one too, quote, your phone calls are not help helping, end quote, and quote, Again, I do not have any update. FEMA is working with us quite a bit on this grant daily and no timeline has been discussed. When they ask for more info, info or details, I work on it diligently and then I continue to wait for further instructions for them. If there is a time frame or any update, I will send these details promptly to you. In the meantime, for time management's sake, that will be the next response, end quote. That is condescending and I've had the same issue in my journey as well. Not by everybody, but by some people that could really um, provide harsh blowback on this if, if they choose to and they have chosen to. And I'm, I'm holding that close to my vest right now. She said, which made me not even feel comfortable communicating <clears throat> with the agency that was supposed to be helping me and representing me in this grant process. And I felt that way as well by people that were supposed, I was, I was, I'm their constituent and I felt the same thing from those people. I turned directly to FEMA, which the representative there did provide me details and updates regarding the grant. Without her, I would have been completely in the dark. So I think everything else is basically the same. Um, but how, how tragic is that? And how unnecessary is that? Because there's a breakdown in the system for Mississippi, whether it's, um, I think it's from the federal to the state, from the state to the county, to the county, to the city, and then regurgitated back up, and then it regurgitates back down, and then they shoot it back up, and then they shoot it back down. But here's the thing, there is a breakdown in our system because Louisiana, and I had uh, an official tell me, well, Louisiana has more NFIP, like insurance policies. I said, even if Mississippi has 10% of the people that have NFIPs, like compared to Louisiana, that's a lot of people that could take advantage of this. So that, that doesn't cut the mustard with me. There is a breakdown in our system and it needs to be fixed. And we, the people, need to call on our officials on every level to get together have a powwow, have a brainstorm session, and figure out what's going on, why it's wrong, and how to fix it. So I implore our officials to get together, make this happen, because yes, it's hard on us, but now we have people, and I promise you, this woman cannot be the only service per, um, person that serves in our military that has had problems with this. She's just the one that came forward, okay? And she retired from the Air Force in 21 when this was all going on. But now she also is under contract with Air Force as a veteran. And she goes in and does training with her valuable resource of her experience. So we need to honor that. We need to honor all the people of Mississippi that deserve this and qualify for it. And we need to get the kinks out because zero dollars has been released. Zero. And we have hundreds of millions in Louisiana. So... If the NFIP um, is one issue, 
that's a small issue because I guarantee you we could take a tally of the number of people in Louisiana that have NFIP insurance and you could compare that to people in Mississippi, even if it's a fraction, like I said, just 10%. Don't we deserve to have those 10% of citizens get their homes out of harm's way? Okay, so I hope y'all can come tonight. I think the address is 598 Main Street. It's at the Conference Center for Bay St. Louis. Um, it, it Just show up and say, hey, I'm one of those people with NFIP insurance and or my grandma is or my mom is or my sister is or my children are. We need to get them help and we pay taxes and we deserve the help. So with that being said, y'all have a blessed day and I will give a follow-up tomorrow. Take care. Bye.